good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Appreciate another opportunity and that to stand and do the will of the Lord. Amen. Tonight we will be back in our studies of the end time churches. In the book of the Revelation here in chapter 2 is where we'll be tonight. We'll be starting at verse number 12. We left off last uh, time and uh, we will be picking up here in verse number 12. I want to make mention that uh, these seven churches that are mentioned here in the book of the Revelation are very much the same depict type of churches that are in our world today. Many uh, of the churches are explained, and uh, we're going to go into depth uh, about uh, these churches tonight. I'm going to do my best to get through uh, chapter number two. And, uh, and then we'll pick up chapter 3 in another study uh, to come. But I'm sure we'll have all three of these studies uh, linked together uh, in that to uh, allow you to sit back and to study uh, on a more uh, uh, easier time or uh, take your time with it and listen. But uh, it's good to be here and another great opportunity in that to open up the Word of God in this prophetic time that we live in. Amen. These days that we live in, folks, are... Uh, very prophetic. There's things that's going on around you and I that um, uh, the Word of God talks much about. And if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you are blessed. Amen. And that to uh, be able to see these things transpire, uh, it, 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 many would say, oh, uh, I, I'm scared to death. I, I don't know what to do. There's no reason to be frightened. Amen. Amen. There's no reason to be frightened. Why? Well, it's this right here in a nutshell. It's because uh, God has got it all devised. If God's got it all devised and already knows how these things will transpire, all we have to do uh, is follow along with the criteria that God lays out and to know who the Kenites are and to uh, teach the Word of God how we ought to and, and uh, we'll be comforted. Amen. Uh, and when the truth sets you free, free friends, you're free indeed. Amen. Amen. And free from fear, and free from man's ways, and uh, but lining up with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, we love you. We thank you again for this opportunity to stand. Ask Father that you'll bless this evening, Father. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. Chapter number 2 and verse number 12. And the angel, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write: These things saith he which hath the sharp sword, and with two edges. Now he's talking about here the angel uh, that uh, is uh, placed at the churches, uh, and he's given. He asked him. He said, "Write." Now, I want you to take a moment and think about this. This church at Pergamos, they had a symbol that they worshipped. And this symbol was their Savior. They used this symbol in that for people to have to look upon to be saved. They used this symbol and that for people to look upon and that to be healed. And uh, it was their Savior, but the problem with it wasn't Christ. This symbol of their Savior was the symbol of a serpent. And it's related back to the ancient Babylonian worship. Now, what I want to do this evening, I want to bring your attention to something. Hopefully, it'll be a help to you. If at any point in time you have an opportunity to do something, I want you to do this. I want you to take a note to this, and I want you to look up a picture of the audience hall in the Vatican City. Now, this picture of an audience hall in Vatican City, this audience hall was designed and built and when you look at it, 
you're going to know what I'm talking about. I brought out already how Pergamus used in that day this serpent and that to worship. They did not call it Christ, but yet they used it in their worship. This building that I'm talking about in the Vatican City, you can come to your own conclusion, but at this end time church that we're talking about, the Catholics... The Pope stands inside this audience hall and when he looks back into the audience he's looking at a building that is built that resembles a serpent. Not the long slivering part of a serpent but the head of a serpent. On the right side and on the left side are an oval window and that oval window depicts the eyes of a serpent. And if you're looking from the audience back, the way that it is designed, the way that it's all put together in the pillars that they have, it looks just like the mouth of a serpent. When you get a chance to look at this, I want you to look now. It may shake the foundation of some, especially if you're Catholic, that It looks exactly like a serpent. The building on the outside does and on the inside, but the biggest thing is this being related to Christianity. Inside this building, there is not one relic symbolizing Christianity. We know that we are not to worship images. We know that we are not to worship the cross, nor the image of Christ on the cross. My Savior is not on the cross. Amen? Amen. My Savior has risen. Amen? But yet, there is no symbols whatsoever inside this Vatican hall, this audience hall. I said all that to say this, that here Christ in verse 12 is going to do some pruning. We preached Sunday about the true vine and how father was the husbandman and how there's some pruning that goes on in a person's life. The father's truly going to do some pruning here. He said again, verse 12, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. In other words, there's going to be there's going to be some pruning going on. Verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now, I believe that what we are seeing here is, is that this church, this format of a church is going to be very popular right where the seat of Satan is, where he is going to set in Jerusalem. I believe that this type of church is going to be uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I believe that the Catholic Church is going to be very much front row of the Antichrist. Just for the way that they teach and the things that they say and the way that they twist the Word of God and how that they do not uphold God's Word. He said here, I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, you see. That's where Satan is going to be. He's going to be right there in Jerusalem. Right there in the Holy City. And thou holdest fast my name. See, in other words, they, they try to do a good job. They try to use the name of Christ and try to uphold that. But the problem is, is that they don't uplift him like they ought to. They do not teach the true word of God. 
and has denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas. Now, this word Antipas, I want to dissect this for you. This word Antipas is a two part word. What this word means is anti father. And what it is saying, in other words, instead of let's let's not dwell on anti father, let's go ahead and make it the anti Christ, okay? So what we see here is that it is also uplifting this church is uplifting uh, the anti Christ where he will be seated. They will do a lot of promoting. You'll find that there'll be a lot of promoting done by this church, this spirit of Pergamos. Okay? All right? So, we see here in verse number 14, he said, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Now, what we need to do here is to recognize what was it that Balaam done? Well, we know through the book of Numbers is that Balaam was a prophet of God, but he wanted to preach the word of God, and he wanted to get the money as fast as he could. That was all that was on that man's mind. But it got to a point where he would not listen to the word of God. He would not listen to God when he spoke. God spoke to him through a donkey even. And he still didn't listen. Problem was, he began to talk back to the donkey. You would appear that if uh, you were in your right mind and you understood and this donkey began to speak to you, you would have to know something supernatural has happened. And the angel of the Lord stood between him and the, the path that he was going and tried to keep him from and steer him from going where he was going. You see, when God's got a plan, it will work. Amen. <laughs> it will work regardless if you're in the equation or not. It's going to work. Amen. But what we're saying here is, is that he said, I have a few things against thee because thou hast... Uh, they are them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. In other words, these that are spiritual beggars, per se. Those that want to uh, preach nothing but every time they bring their messages, every time they put together the message, it's about the money. It's about the purse. It's about the income of the church. There's no need to worry about the income of the church. If you're doing the will of the Lord, I'm a firm believer and also a firm example that God will clear the path for you and make a way if you're doing God's will correctly. Amen? Amen. You don't have to beg. You don't have to ask for money. You'll never see this preacher ask you for a dime. If you have something you want to give to this church, you do it out of your heart. Amen? But I'll never ask you for it. Reason be, because we have no need. Father will supply our every need. If God uses a person to help this church, so be it. Amen? But it be, let it God. Amen? Let God do the work. So he's saying here that uh, them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. These are spiritual beggars in the pulpit, but this fornication, this fornication is not what you think. It's a spiritual fornication. What they are doing are not teaching the true word of God. They like to twist it around. They like to add to it. They like to take away from it. And that, too, again, is exactly how that the Catholics do. Verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Now, this Nicolaitans, if you'll see here that they also 
plagued the church of Ephesus over here in verse number 6. But we see here that the modern churches are accepting heathen traditions as being from God. That's what their problem with. That's exactly what the Nicolaitans done. They let them know that it was okay uh, and that to eat the sacrificial food, which it wasn't, and said it was of God. All right, taking that in the same concept of people trying to put together events and uh, demonstrations and uh, the, the music, the lights and the dancing and all the different things, and they call that church from God, and it's not. It's not of the Lord. These things are entertaining, and it will draw people. Yes, there's a spirit in it, but it's not the spirit of God. And it's very dangerous to entertain that kind of thing. I meant to ask you to do one thing. I want you to look in your mind. Now, I'm not talking to the church here tonight. I'm talking to those on the Facebook page and in the YouTube. I'd like for you to examine your church. And think about these churches as we begin to bring this out. Think about exactly what it is that your church teaches and how it is that they demonstrate or bring out these things. Amen? Amen. If they're not teaching the Word of God, if they're not laying down the criteria of the Word of God like it ought to be, if they're trying to boost emotions and trying to uh, work in entertainment and they continue to talk about the money... Friends, you may be in the wrong church. Amen. Amen. He said here in verse, let's see, hold on, I want to go somewhere. I want to go to Romans 11. Let's go over to Romans 11. In verse number 17. Excuse me, verse number 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. What he's saying here is that they never get the real true word of God. They never really attach themselves to the true word of God. They like what they hear. It sounds good. But friend, it's not of God. When you begin to put all this together, you can come to your own conclusion that... Uh, it sounds very much like an end time church. He said in verse number 16, he's asking them, he said, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And he will do that. In this day, if money is more important to you than the word of God, then, friends, you are falling right into the criteria of this church at Pergamos. Christ wants us to understand that there's a whole lot more involved than worrying about the income or worrying about the bills. I truly believe if you do the will of the Father, if you do God's will, God will make a way. He has for us ever since we started and I truly believe that he will until we're out of here. Amen? Amen. I truly believe that. Verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, which no man knoweth, saying, saving he that received it. Now the word stone, here in verse 17, it means a pebble worn smooth in counting. A pebble worn smooth in counting is what that stone means. Okay? Now, the word count is not like that you and I would think one, two, three, four, and so on and so on. It's not like that. But in the Greek word is it's, it's stigma. Okay? Now, if you... To use the pebbles in a enumeration to compute or to count is what the uh, Strong's tells us. It tells us that they've used this in that to, uh, to... 
to compute or to count. Now, this, I'm bringing something out. The Kenites used their skills into controlling the majority, in determining the right or the wrong, and who's in power, and the basis of their world system through the UN. How they use this. This is how we are going to lose the national sovereignty and be brought under control of this Satan system at the ballot box is how it's done. And by the polls and through the democratic process of the numbering of the people. That's exactly what he's trying to say here. So he's saying here, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say of the churches to him, take, take note now, right here is where you should underline, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden man, angel's food for the spiritual body. Amen? That's just what, exactly what he's going to give you. The spiritual food that you need if you overcome it. So what is he saying about overcome? If you separate yourself from this type of church, if you do not take part of this church, if you do not allow this type of system in your church. Amen? Amen. God is the head of this church. I am just an over-shepherd, okay? I'm not the head of this church. God will see fit when he wants to shut the door, that's what he'll do, amen? He'll leave them open just as long as he wants. And until you put God center of the church, friends, you've done nothing but allow a bunch of men and women come in and have a group. That's all you've got. Amen. And the word of God is not freely taught. There'll be somebody that'll rear their head up and not like what you're saying. Although it's all of God's word, line upon line, like it ought to be, and demonstrating and explaining just as much as you possibly can, but yet somebody will always have their eye offended, you see. They'll always be offended one way or another, and they'll rear up. It's normally the ones that give the large amount, amen? Those who think they've got a little bit of control on something. That's why we don't want nobody having control. Amen? Amen? Let God be in control. If it comes down the pike, it comes from God. The Word of God said every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above. Amen? Amen? That comes from that spiritual matter and from the income that we may need to even put it all together. Amen. We don't worry about those things. What do we worry about? We worry about our loved ones uh, falling by the wayside. Amen? We worried about our friends uh, uh, being taken by the Antichrist. That's what we worry about. That's what our prayers are. Amen? Amen. It's not about whether or not the lights are going to stay on uh, or if the building's still going to be ours. Uh, friend, it doesn't matter. Amen? What I have in my heart is the Word of God. Amen. And no man can take it from me. It's something that God has given us. And it's that spiritual wisdom. He said... To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Praise be unto God. He'll give it to you. Amen. He'll Amen. give you that. Amen. That hidden manna. That spiritual food that you need. Amen. Just when you think you've got it all figured out, Peggy. He'll flip it around and show you something a little bit different. Amen. Well, what a blessing that is. That's that spiritual manna that I'm talking about. And he said, and I will give him a white stone. Now, this white stone will be given to those for a reason. Let's look over in Deuteronomy 32. You knew where I was going. Deuteronomy 32. Verse 30 and 31. How should one choose a thousand and two put ten thousand to fly? except their rock had sold them, and the Lord shut them up. For their rock is not our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Their rock is not our rock. This rock, this stone that you will receive, this white stone, and a new name written on it, this will be a reward that will be given unto you for accomplishing uh, the 
steadfastness that you ought to hold during the days of the tribulation, during that hour of temptation, during that time when the Antichrist is very strong and very cunning, but yet we waver not. Amen? I like what the Word talks about and how, how like some of them are like a reed in the wind. Amen? Which way are they going to blow today? Well, whichever way the wind blows. Amen? It blows this way and it blows that way. It blows this way and that way. It, it, it doesn't matter. They'll take anything that comes down the pipe. Amen? I don't want to be depicted as no reed. Amen? I want to be like a tree planted by the water. Amen? Amen. Steadfast and unmovable. Amen. Waiting upon the Lord. Yes, That's the key to it all, friend. Amen. Now, this... Also, this stone will be given because of those who recognize who the Kenites are. They recognize and they point them out and they know exactly how they are. That's exactly everything that I have read to you from verse 12 down to 17 depicts the Kenites in a, in a, in a, in a very easily way. We see that their mind is always on the money and they're always wanting to distort the word of God. They're always wanting to take your mind off the trueness of it and entertain you with something that is evil. Amen. And they bring in these uh, doctrines and bring in these idols and bring in these ways of doctrinal issues and call it of God. That's the way of the church of Pergamos. But do that for me tonight, tomorrow, the next day, whenever you have time. I want you to look up that that audience hall in the Vatican City. I want you to take a picture of that. I want you to look at that very closely. That's exactly what the scripture is trying to tell us here. I'm going back to verse 12. And the angel of the church in Pergamos write these things, saith he, we have the sharp sword and two edges. See, you must catch that. You must know what it was that Pergamos done and how that they taught and what they used. Amen? Very, very important that you see that. And recognize it today, you see. Recognize it for what it is. It's satanic. It's evil. It's not of God, okay? And Christ is trying his best. You see how Christ is pleading with them? He said, you know, you use the good words, you even uplift my name, and, and you hold me dear, but you're far from me. You aren't teaching the true word of God. Not only that, but they gather together large groups of people. Some say, well, that's a great thing, though. Not necessarily. Because you're going to have just about everything under the sun in that group. And it's not always of God. Amen? So, we see how that he feels about the church at Pergamos. Let's go down to verse number 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. This is depicting Christ. We know that this is depicting the time when he will arrive. Amen? When he will stand upon this earth, and he will be the good shepherd, but he will rule with a rod of iron. Amen? Verse 19. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. What he's saying here, he said, I know your works and your love. This word charity, you see, is love and service and faith. He said, thy patience and thy works. In other words, he said that twice. He said, I know your works. I know what you do, but your heart is not in it. It's not about love, you see. You don't love what you do, and nor do you show love. Amen? In other words, their works are more than love. And they do not know who the Kenites are. They do not teach who the Kenites are, you see. That's exactly what Christ is trying to say. Verse <clears throat> number 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, 
because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, this Jezebel is not the same Jezebel of the Old Testament. This is depicting over <clears throat> in Revelation chapter 17 about the harlot, amen? amen? This political, or excuse me, this religious harlot that will be involved, which will be the system that will doctrine the people, that will teach the people. The worst part about this harlot is, is that over 95% of God's children are sottish. And they're unlearned. So when it finally does sink into their minds, uh, it's going to be poison. Poison from the Antichrist. He said, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou permit sufferance. That word sufferance is permit. He said, You permit that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, and to commit fornication. They love the harlot, and she teaches zero. She teaches nothing. She will not teach you any type of thing that will help you. It will all be wrapped up in a big emotion. It's more or less uh, a big old present that you never get to open. They whip and put together and promise you all these things and, and try to build it up, but it never does hold. It never does hold. Anybody with any common sense would be able to see through it, especially if you've ever been in the Word of God. And that's why we are here tonight, amen? amen. To prepare the people and to help the people to recognize it when this comes about. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. They're all sold out to emotion. They're all sold out to a flyaway theory. They're all sold out to an any moment doctrine. They're all sold out to an easy believism and just an easy old way. And, and, and no one ever speaks about that hour of temptation. And, and no one ever speaks about going through the tribulation. No one ever speaks about that 150 days that the Antichrist will be here. They never talk about it whatsoever. You ever been around a place like that? Amen. Amen. It's sad. They do not allow the sheep to eat. It's almost as if they put a, a, a piece of screen, Brother Bob, over top of the trough, and they allow them to see it, but they won't let them get to it. Amen? Amen. That's sad. It's terribly sad to think that God's children are starving, dried up on the vine, and not being fed the Word of God. Makes me angry. Amen? Makes me angry to think that there are ministers out here that call themselves servants of God, but yet they starve out the people because they will not teach the Word of God. It's sad. Well, when God gets a hold of them, it won't be a pretty thing, friends. The God of glory, when He comes down and He sets His feet upon that area in Jerusalem, friends, the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And friends, there'll be some that'll confess in mourning and crying out and weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there will be some that will praise God on their knees and give glory unto that one that has come because they have waited Amen. upon the true Christ. Amen. Verse 22, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now what Christ just done right there, he separated the punishment from Thyatira and said, if you'll do this, 
Listen. If you will separate yourself from a church that is not teaching the true word of God, and you repent and find yourself a place to study, it's more than just getting saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's so much more than just allowing Christ in that to come into your life. Amen, brother. So many people today are on the milk and and the bad part about it, half the time it's watered down milk. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not even decent milk. Amen. It's not even the cream even. Yeah. And they won't allow them to uh, learn the true word of God. They gather together and they say, Oh, I don't like the book of the Revelation, do you? No, it scares me to death. I don't want to teach it. If we can just find us a preacher uh, uh, that'll stay over here in the gospel, that's all we want. All we want to know is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, friends, let me say this to you. Uh, it was a beautiful thing that what my Savior done. Amen. He died on the cross, amen, in Calvary, and He shed His glorious blood for me and you. Amen. But friends, He's gone off that cross. Uh, we don't need to preach the cross every day and we don't need to let people uh, uh, settle in uh, on just salvation. Amen. There's so much more involved Amen. that we need under our belt uh, to prepare us. Amen. I keep coming up with that. That preparation is big today. We need that. Amen. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And then they commit adultery with her into great tribulation. These that fall for this one, these that go after this, the Bible says not only is it going to be tribulation, but friends, it's going to be great tribulation. Amen. It's going to be the second trib is what's going to get them. Amen? That's right. The tribulation of Jesus Christ when he steps out and he has that rod of iron. Amen? I'm going to find right up here in verse 27 what it's going to happen. But what he said here, this is an individually accountability. An individual accountability. You don't have to stand behind the first Baptist of Knoxville. You don't have to stand behind the first church of God. You don't have to stand behind a church. You can repent individually and come to the knowledge of the truth. So separate yourself. Amen. Am I telling people to get away from their churches? Friends, if they don't teach the true word of God, that's what I'm saying. Amen? Amen. You can take it for what it's worth. Amen. Infuriates me to a point, friends, I don't know even the... Uh, I, 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 I hope I never have to step into another church today that teaches in that fashion. Amen? Amen. Amen. I used to be cordial and go with men and, and go with people to revivals and, and sit and listen to a man that had no earthly idea of what he was even talking about. Right. Had no earthly idea of the Word of God. Sitting there hoping to be fed by the Word of God. Yeah. Had you be alone and had you knife and your fork ready to eat, amen. And nothing ever comes your way. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing but a bunch of hooping and a hollering and jumping around and talking about mama and papa. Amen. He said in verse 23, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. I definitely want you to listen to me now. Listen to me closely. He said, I will kill her children. Right. Meaning after she has brought forth these children. Amen. Turn with me over to Mark chapter 13, verse 17. Very familiar scripture here in this little church. I'm about to quote it, but I'm just going to turn over here just for the sake of time. He said, but woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Amen. This is that spiritual bed that he's talking about back in verse 22. I'll cast her into a bed. Amen. Amen. When you take on uh, this antichrist doctrine, uh, 
When you take this on, uh, the Bible said that you went a uh, whoring uh, after the wrong Jesus. And spiritually, you are with child. When the Lord Savior, when He comes back and He sees that you are with child and you have been given suck in those days, in other words, you have taken this doctrine on uh, and you have allowed it in your life, in your system. Uh, you have went as far as to lie in bed uh, uh, with this uh, harlot. Amen. And you have taken out and you have been a teacher, you see. Or you passed out their tracks. Or you passed out their uh, their revival uh, invitation. It's just as simple as that. It's what he says he's going to do here. He said, I will kill her children with death. Who is death? That is Satan. In other words, he will turn them right over into the Antichrist camp, if that's what you want. Amen. That's what he just said. I will kill her children with death. Amen. We all know that death is Satan. Right. We all know that he's coming. Amen. When's he coming, church? At the sixth trump. How long is he going to be here, church? Five months. Amen. 150 days for you and I. Five months for them. Amen. Amen. That's the difference between the solar and the lunar. Amen. But yet, he is talking about here those who uh, partake and take into this. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be a horrible time. They're going to think they've got it all figured out. You see, many, many, many people that have never darkened the house of the Lord are going to come to that revival and come to listen to what he has to say. Many people that have been offended inside the house of God and been pushed out are going to come to that revival. Many of those who never took time in that to study the Word of God and just went by like that reed I was talking about in the wind, uh, they're going to go and flock to that revival. There's going to be a lot of pregnant people Amen. when the Lord comes back. A lot of people spiritually pregnant. Those that did not wait for the true Lord. Verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. That's a blessing, friend. What's Christ trying to say there? He said, if you will repent and you will not listen to that type of doctrine that we've been talking about, if you will repent and get away from it and you begin to study the true Word of God, say you study here with the fresh start, and you begin to study the Word of God and you begin to learn and come to the knowledge of the truth, and you hold yourself and you keep yourself for that true Jesus that's coming. Amen. When's he coming? At the last trump. This is what he's asking. Matthew 24 and verse 13. Brother Mike loves this scripture. And he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. That's all he's asking of you. What about the mistakes that I have made? Friends, repent and let it be under the blood. Amen. Amen. Oh, I thought he was just talking about uh, hanging out at the beer joints and, and, and uh, uh, doing drugs when I was younger. And, and, and then, uh, no, friends, it goes as far as the doctrine that you teach. Amen. And that what you listen to. That sin is more powerful than any type of sin that you can commit this day. Amen. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 is what he's asking you. To put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand the wells of the devil right. in that end time. Amen, brother. That's what he's asking you to do. 
25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Who's he talking to there, folks? He's talking to the elect of God. Amen. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute. He said, uh, but that which ye already have already, hold fast till I come. In other words, that knowledge of the Word of God, that right. wisdom, do not allow uh, uh, this Antichrist to come in to, to change your mind. Amen. Do not allow him to change your heart or your mind right. in any form or fashion. Amen. You ward them away just as fast as they come to your door. Amen. If you're a student of the Word of God, believe me, they will come to your door. That's right. Be prepared. They will come to your door. Amen. You'll be the only ones that's not there. And they will know. And they will look. And they will seek out. And they will find right. all of those who will not participate. But he said here, he that overcometh, 26, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. This works he's talking about, it's not just faith. It's studying the word of God. Amen. That's the work. You don't think God sees what we're doing here? You don't think that God knows where we're at on the book and, and, and where we are in the scriptures and, and where we are in our study? You don't think God knows what you have retained over the last year and a half? God knows. Amen. And he's proud of it, friends. Amen. And he loves you. Amen. And he's prepared a way for you. A way that will protect you during that last, well, that hour of temptation, as we always say. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken in shivers. Even as I receive of my father. This rule he'll rule like a shepherd. And this rod will be his scepter. And when he comes, he'll come and he will... Bet. Now this is... This is that tribulation of Christ that I'm talking about. This is this second trib that we're talking about. Brother Reynolds, I ain't never heard of no second tribulation. You don't study the Word of God, don't know about what God's talking about. You are prepared for the coming of the Lord. Friends, you're going to know. Amen. You're going to know that tribulation. He's going to come and destroy these churches. He's going to come and destroy. Now, we're talking spiritually now. I'm not talking that he's going to come and knock these buildings down. I'm talking spiritually what has been taught. Right. These men who think they're big and got all this and got all these people that are flocking after them and, and following them, they think that they're really doing something good. Friends, if they're not teaching the true word of God, friends, they're going to fall right here. What's he say he's going to do to him? Verse 28. And I will give him the morning star. <laughs> this ain't the morning star that you think it is. Amen. This is the morning star over in Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 12. And his name is Lucifer. Amen. That's who he's going to give you over to. Right. If you want to live your life and, and never buckle down and try to figure out what God's trying to say. You just want to uh, uh, carry your Bible back and forth to church and never open it up at home and study the Word of God. If you just want to go and sing the services away and, and be entertained, that's exactly what he said he'd do right here. I will give him that morning star. Let's turn over there to Isaiah 14 real quick. Isaiah chapter 14.
Verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Amen. That's exactly the morning star that he's talking about. That's exactly who he'll turn those over to. Amen. These will be those who do not have that seal of God in their forehead. Right. They'll be those who will be devoured by the locusts. They will be those who will be taken over and swooped off their feet into the camp of the Antichrist and never even know it. Amen. Because of their worry about their pride and worry about their income and worried about this and that. How am I going to make my ends meet? How am I going to do these things? How am I going to, uh, I guess we're just going to have to put our name on the list too. That's exactly how people will think. They'll turn their lives right over and hand their life right over into the Antichrist and accept everything he's got to give. Verse 29, come to a close. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. We've only went through four churches so far. There's three more still left. Out of them four, God has found that he loves one of them. Smyrna teaches who the Kenites are. Amen. This church loves the Lord. This church loves teaching the word of God. My prayer is that this little church at Fresh Start follows along with this in that church of Philadelphia. That we always teach and that we always point out. We be that watchman upon the wall and we be that one that will tell the people and alarm them when these things are coming. That's what we are expected to do. These end time churches, friend, are very dangerous. So many people I see going through the motions, thinking they've done God a service by coming out and going to a visit on Sunday and going and listen to the, uh, the preaching. They go home just as more confused than they were when they got there. Amen. That's why he said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. It's important that you listen. It's important that you rightly divide. And you know who these people are. Amen. And that you do not fall into that criteria. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we'll pick back up next time in Revelation chapter 3 in the end time church.